So, like I said, the power rankings are are, are in here. We normally do this every Sunday, but, you know, we were off son, son, Sunday and off Monday. So we squeaked them in here on the Wednesday edition here on the Man Hour. So, Hoppy, who do you got coming in at number 10 right off the bat? So here's, uh, here's where we're going to get tricky right off the bat. Um, you have the Oakland Athletics leading the West. Um, but since their 13-game winning streak in April, uh, they haven't won more than three games in a row. Uh, they're essentially a 500 team. Um, so I actually have the Houston, Houston Astros, which are leading the league in batting average. Even though they're in second place, I have them at number 10 in front of the Athletics. Yeah, and and they are sitting second in the AL West at thirty and twenty four, and they are they are coming off of a two game winning streak here versus your Boston Red Sox, and they're playing right now. I mean, they what they've won what? Uh, I mean, they've only won four of their last ten here. So, isn't that a little high? Like right right at the bat, I mean like they mean like yeah, they've won three in a row, one versus the Padres and two versus the Sox here, but you know they. I mean, they got swept by the Rangers earlier. Come on, man. Yeah, but I mean, their pitching staff isn't helping them out. But if you look at all their, you know, offensive categories, they're they're up there. Same thing with the Red Sox. I mean, you look at the Red Sox too, and their pitching staff is terrible. But you know, we'll see. So, so do you mean I I believe earlier in the season you had the Astros winning this division, right? No, uh, I think. I, no, I actually had the Athletics. Uh, I was yeah. going to say, I think me and Combs both had the Angels. But, no, I had the Athletics. He had Angels. Okay. Uh, so, do you think the Astros are, are going to come up and be the team here in the in the AL West? Or, or are they are they, are they going to come back crashing that down to reality like the Reds did earlier? I, I do think that they're going to be a team that's going to get hot and cold. Uh, and, and I think the Athletics are going to remain around 500. So, I do think that, you know, I'm starting to second guess my pick on the athletics and and starting to think maybe the Astros might sneak in there by a game or two. So how can the Astros improve? Does their pitching need to 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 improve? Because I, I believe you said they are leading the majors in batting average. So like, how can they improve? Yeah, Granky's been turning it around of late. Um, but yeah, they, they they're younger guys just need to establish themselves and, and get comfortable. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, you got Altuve who uh, you know. He's, he's found his form again, unfortunately, for Brandon. I know he's not a huge fan of him, but, I mean, he's one of the best, you know, ball players in the American League right now offensively. Yeah, and I, I, I'm actually a huge Zach Greinke fan, not because he used to pitch for Kansas City, just because he has he seems to find success everywhere he goes. I mean, he's he's been on, what, like six or seven teams in the last 10, 12 years, and he always seems to find success in no matter what division he is in. So at 10, you do have the Houston Astros. Who do you have coming in at number nine? Number nine, I have the uh, the New York Yankees. Uh, they entered last week, uh, riding a six game winning streak. They were twelve in, uh, they had won twelve of the last fifteen games uh, coming into last week before they uh, stumbled this week. Uh, but Garrett Cole's posted a Cy Young caliber, uh, you know, year, which he was my Cy Young pick. Uh, One point seven eight ERA, point uh, eight three uh, WHIP. He's got ninety seven strikeouts in in seventy innings so far this year. Um, so. I do think that this uh, Yankees team might be, you know, coming up on the tail end of my uh, my Red Sox for that second place seed. Yeah, so the Yankees right now are actually about two games behind your Boston Red Sox here for second place. They're sitting at thirty and twenty five. I mean, yes, I did see that six game winning streak earlier last week, but I also saw them get swept by the terrible Detroit Tigers. Not only did they get swept, they they they, they just could not muster up any runs here. So. What warrants them to be in, in, in the like in the top ten after getting you know getting swept by the Tigers here and probably and probably going to lose the series versus the Rays as well. I mean, who's not going to lose a series versus the Rays at this point in time? Um, but I mean, we have we have a huge series coming up this weekend with the Yankees and the Red Sox. So I, I think the Yankees are going to prove their worth this coming. Uh, and it's painful for me me to say that, but I think this weekend we will. Yeah, so uh, it looks like you froze on me here a little bit, a bit, Hoppy. So hopefully you unfreeze here. But he does have the New York Yankees coming in at number nine, and they right now are sitting at third place in the AL East standings. So, Hoffy, if if you can hear me, man, just go ahead and remove yourself from the stream and then add yourself back in because you are 100% frozen on me, and it looks like you maybe even lost your Internet service there. So, Hoffy, just go ahead and click on that link as soon as you can, man, and we will uh, 
gets uh, back into the power rankings here. So coming in at number 10 right now, he does have the Houston Astros. Earlier back in April, they did they did have that 13 game winning streak, but you know since since then they are they, they have been kind of hot hot and cold per Hoffy here, and but they do have the number one batting average in the Major League Baseball season right now. And then at number nine, he does have the New York Yankees. Uh, to so just to recap, they are they, they are 12 and three in their last 15 games prior to this week. Uh, this week so far, they have lost. Uh, looks like four out of their last five, and they're playing the Tampa Bay Rays right now. However, their pitching is on point here. Garrett Cole is uh, basically pitching Cy, Cy, Cy Young caliber of game game here, and he has 1.78 ERA with 97 strikeouts in just 70 innings and two-thirds innings pitched. So as soon as Hoffy does get back on here, at number eight, I do have his power rankings here for you. He does have the Milwaukee Brewers. The Mil- the Milwaukee Brewers split a, split a, split a four-game series with the San, San Diego Padres before sweeping the Nationals over the weekend. Brandon Woodruff has tossed 14 scoreless innings in the last two starts, and he is now top of the sport of 1.27 ERA and .69 whip with 83 strikeouts and 71 innings. That is absolutely amazing pitching stats right off the bat there. And this has been the staple of the Milwaukee Brewers all season is their pitching. And earlier in the season, Combs and Hoffman them both said that the Milwaukee Brewers pitching staff was going to be the worst in that uh, central division there. And they have basically come out and proved everybody wrong. So, Hoffy, I just went over your your number eight pick there in the Mo, in the Milwaukee Brewers, and I'm talking about how good their pitching has been, and like how you said that, or Combs, I should say, said that their pitching was was going to be horrible this mm-hmm. season. I mean, what do you think is contributing to their turnaround and their p- pitching and just carrying this this team because they have the worst batting average in all the major league baseball. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it goes to Craig Council, their manager, and how he manages that pitching staff. Um, and I think Tory would, you know, be the first to discuss on on that. I think he's one of the best managers when it comes to managing a pitching staff. You know, he does not let his players go too long. Uh, you know, extend and you know, extending you know pitches, etc. Um, you know, and it, it keeps them healthy. So you know, I, I don't understand where uh, Combs was coming. You know negative with their pitching staff because that was going to be their their positive all year yeah I mean and 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 like Tory flat out said said you know that the pitching was going to be their staple all CEAs along and their hitting was going to be their downfall and that is proving point there I mean their leading batter is batting like 178 <laughs> if I'm not mistaken uh, yeah so, when Jackie Bradley's in your top five you have issues yeah I mean it's just it is it, it is it is bad 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 thing here so just to recap here so far at number 10 you have the Houston Astros Number nine, New York Yankees. Number eight, the Milwaukee Brewers. Who do you have coming in at number seven? Number seven, we have the defending uh, World Series champs, Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, they were on their way to reclaiming that number one spot back, um, you know, before they uh, took a big step back this week, losing three of four to their rival Giants at home. Um, you know, top three teams in this NL West are going to compete for, you know, those top three spots in yep. the NL West. So I, I think it's going to be, you know, wh- who's there at the end. So. Yeah, so they so they did win eight in a row over the over the Diamondbacks, Giants, and Astros before getting swept by the Giants just the a few days after that. So, do you think this is a this is a trend with a lot of the major league baseball teams as they get hot, cold, hot, cold, or do you think the Dodgers are going to be kind of of that mediocre 600, 700 team all season? I mean, the Dodgers started hot, and they, they faced a lot of injuries, and they're getting some of those players back, such as uh, Bellinger's coming back now, um, and then Zach McKinstry is coming back. So that's going to help them. Um, so, you know, but, yeah, I do think a lot of teams look at the uh, the NL East. We thought that was going to be the best division in, in all of baseball, and uh, none of none of them can get healthy. They could barely stay over 500 for the most part. Yeah, so we actually talked about the baseball injuries l- a, 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 a little bit on last night's show about how the 10-day DL is just filling up with players like left and right. What do you think the biggest the biggest reason for those injuries are? I, I, I don't think that, uh, you know, with last year's season and, and, and everything and having the, you know, the shortened season and now coming into this year where you're playing – you know, the full season, I think it was, you know, 
as far as a baseball fan, I love it. But I, I think as far as for the body and everything, it probably wasn't handled the best way. So you think the shortened se- season and the compressed season last year and then not getting your full three, four months off and then turning around and, 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 like, and playing is adding into the factor of getting injured? Yeah, I, I think baseball, I mean, similar to football, it's all about repetitions and you can yeah. only get so many, you know, so many in with, you know, rules, regulations, et cetera, with your actual teams. Uh, and yeah, I just think the shortened season and, and, and now coming into it and you're playing every day where, you know, where you weren't last year um, right. and you only played for two months. So yeah, you're able to get hot and stay hot, but it's, it's hard to stay hot for 162 game season. So basically what you're saying is Combs is absolutely wrong because so the shortened season did affect this year's players, right? Combs is wrong about everything, but we just, you know. Okay, I, 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 I just, I just want to make sure we are on the same page on that 100%. So you had the the L.A. Dodgers coming in at, at number seven. So at number six, uh, this is kind of a, a uh, eye-raising for me, but, I mean, it, it, if, is it a possible homer pick? Who do you have coming in at number six? A homer pick? Uh, I got I got the Boston Red Sox. I mean they've they've held the division lead the entire entire year pretty much. Uh, they're still in top five in almost every offensive category. Um, you know you got Alex Vertigo, Bogarts, Martinez, and Devers carrying this team, but the pitching staff, um, you know, opposite of what the Brewers have going on, uh, the pitching staff is going to be the Achilles heel of uh, this Red Sox team. Yeah, I mean they have. I mean they they won. Uh, what was it? seven of their last nine games, but then they've dropped two games versus the Astros, the same Astros that you have sitting at number 10. So kind of by defaulto facto type of thing here, shouldn't the Red Sox be kind of like neck and neck with the Astros here since the Astros have beat them? I mean, I had the Red Sox at like three, four-ish last week, so that's why they've bumped into, you know, okay. down to the six, and, and the Astros were, but yeah, I mean, after tonight's game, you know, we can we can see where we're at with that. So, 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 just so the people know, like, how do you figure out your power rankings here? Is it a week to week thing? Is it a, a cumulative over the season, or how do you think they're going to finish in the postseason? Like, how do you do your power rankings? I, I try, you know, obviously you got to take into effect the, the yearly record, um, you know, the body of work. But I'm also taking into effect what you've done for me lately. You know, it's it's all about how hard are you right this second, you know. You can be, you know, we're seeing it in the NHL playoffs right now. You can be, you know, the number eight seed, and you can make it into that next round and such. So I think that uh, it's really just who's hot, you know, at this moment. I don't think a lot of teams are going to think that the Cubs are even in the top ten of the power rankings. But, you know, when you go by my standards, they're number one uh, if you go by my standards. Right. So, so like, like I just want to put that out there just in case people have any issues of, like, why our teams are ranked or, like, where are like, where where we're for that. So just to recap here at number 10 you have the Astros, 9 you have the Yankees, 8 you have the Brewers, 7 you have the Dodgers, 6 you have the Red Sox. So coming into the top 5, you do have the San Francisco Giants here. Tell tell me why the Giants are cracking your 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 top 5. I mean they're 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 in first place in their division, but I mean their pitching staff is it has been one of the better of the three pitching staffs in the uh, NL West, but I don't expect that to continue. Um, you know, I, I expect that the, you know, the Dodgers and the Padres are going to stay hot and I expect the San Francisco, you know, Giants team to come back to earth. But, you know, one week after they swept the Dodgers at home, uh, they took three or four at Dodger stadium to climb back in the top five. Um, you know, with two more strong starts last week, they're, they're p- pitching Kevin Gossman. He's now six and oh, 1.4 ERA. Um, you know, so he's, he's doing pretty well. You got Buster Posey, Brandon Crawford, Evan Longoria, who you were thinking at the beginning of this year were, you know. This might be their farewell tour, and they found the fountain of youth. Uh, I think a lot of that comes to do with their manager, Gabe Kapler. Um, you know, I think he's been a huge success to that team. Yeah, look, look at the Giants pitching staff Staff here. There are a lot of familiar names on there, one of which is Johnny Cueto, and he does have World Series pedigree, winning a, a World Series with the Kansas City Royals in 2015. Do you think this Giants team has the capability of going to the World Series as currently constructed? I, I don't. I think it's going to be too difficult for them to, you know, continue to compete with the powerhouse in their own division in the Padres and the Dodgers. So do they have to make uh, – if they were to make some moves before the All-Star break to possibly break out of that, you know, that division, you know, and and, and kind of take ownership, what do you think they they, they, they got to do? Uh, I, I mean, I think a, a big power bat would help them. Um, 
you know, I haven't looked deeply into their offensive numbers. I know they're not in the top, you know, not top five for really much anything. Right. Um, but I think they could use a power bat to, uh, you know, get them some RBIs behind, you know, Longoria, Crawford, and, and some of those, you know, leadoff hitters. Gotcha. So you do have the San Francisco 49ers coming at, at number five. What about number four? So number four, I have uh, the Chicago White Sox. Uh, after getting swept by the Yankees on the road two weeks ago, uh, they bounced back. They went 6-1 and one against the Cardinals and the Orioles, uh, outscored their opponents 31-15 to 15 along the way. Um, after a rocky start, Luis uh, Giolito, or Giolito uh, has strung together three straight uh, quality starts, lowering his ERA from just under 5 to about 3.75. Uh, he's supposed to be your ace, and he hasn't been this year, and yet you're still leading your league. Or your division, excuse me. So you got to think that they're uh, they're only going to continue to probably build on that division lead. Yeah, and then we forgetting that they add a big offseason pitcher. You know, f- from the I-, I believe he was from the Astros this offseason as well. Lance Lance Lynn. You haven't heard a heard a lot about him either. Do you think this pitching staff is really what separates them in the AL Central? I do, but uh, it it also comes down to what is their manager going to do? Right. Um, is he going to you know? Is he going to blow this team up again, you know, cause them to go on a six-game losing streak, or is he going to just let them play ball? What do you think the what, what do you think happens? I think he finds a way to butcher it in the playoffs. So, the, so, 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 so you had them making the playoffs be just because they win the division or, or because they're that good to make the playoffs? I mean, they should be in the World Series. They got that talent. I mean, uh, my manager is a White Sox fan, and he even – we talk on a daily. He hates the hire of La Russa. He thinks, you know – doesn't understand why you hire an old school guy. Um, you know, he's not the LaRusso of the 90s. You need somebody, you know, Gabe Kapler, uh, Rocco Baldelli, you know, Alex Cora, some of the younger, you know, managers that get get along with the players and such. So we'll S- see. So would you have hired like a player manager or like a young and up and coming manager? Like what kind of hire do you think that would have fit this team perfect? I, I think Gabe Kapler would have been a perfect fit for them. Um, you know, maybe maybe that maybe that was their pick, and you know the Giants swooped in there, or whatnot. But uh, I I think Gabe Kapler would have been probably the ultimate pick. You know, he was there this year, so that's just one that comes to mind. You know, comes to mind, um, off the top of my head. Uh, so one thing, because like we haven't spoke is spoken since you know this happened. Uh, but your your mini Mercedes hit that bomb on a three zero pitch when they're up like seventeen to one, and Larusa come out and basically chewed his player out for swinging for like swinging the bat and hitting a ball the way he did what are your thoughts on that that's what i was referring to and then they went on like a six game losing streak right so is he going to just shut up and let him play um or is he going to continue to find a way to just you know mess with that team chemistry um mm-hmm. i get the i get the rules of baseball probably shouldn't have, probably shouldn't have done it but he did it who cares i i mean it's in the past. You can't change anything. To dwell on it, to speak on it, who cares? So, are you on. are you okay with him swinging the bat, or are you like the old school unwritten rules? Just uh, watch it. I don't care. I probably wouldn't have swung the bat, but hey, if, you know, because of of fear of popping it up, and and then hey, you walk back to the bench, and I expect to get chewed out. But right. I hit a home run. I absolutely pimp in that thing. But uh, I'm not taking the chances. I'm I'll I'll, I'll let that one go. But uh, I'm not going to complain if someone else does it. But if they pop up. They're going to get an earful. Oh, all righty. So you heard it here from the baseball lackey himself as he dribbles a slow pitch softball uh, up the middle, get thrown out at first nine times out, like out of ten. I had two strikes on that one time. <laughs> so let's go ahead and go ahead and, and a recap here. At number ten, you had the Astros. Nine, you had the Yankees. Eight, you had the Brewers. Seven, you had the L.A. Dodgers. Six, you had the Boston Red Sox. Seven, five, you had the forty or the uh, the Giants, the San Francisco Dodgers. Mm-hmm. Giants. Four, you had the White Sox. Who do you have coming in at number three? Number three, I have my World Series favorites, the Padres. Uh, they split a four-game series with uh, Torrey's Brewers before taking two out of three from the Astros. Um, but that's not enough to hold on to the top spot. Uh, after two straight uh, – actually, no, they've, they've lost three straight to, uh, you know, the best team in baseball right now, the Cubs, right? Uh, so this <laughs> team leads, you know, leads the league in ERAs, Ks, you know, and Tatis is hitting 409 with seven home runs, 23 RBIs, 15 runs, 18 hits in his last 13 games. So – uh, I think this three-game skid is going to end probably after today, uh, and I expect them to get hot and stay hot. Yeah, and uh, I re- I remember speaking to you about you know earlier in the season, and when, when and when we were looking at the Padres schedule here, 
their schedule was not fa- favorable, like, at all. Like, they played the Angels and Dodgers, like, back-to-back series for, like, the first, for, like, the first month of the season. And somehow, some way, they still have a 600 winning percentage. Do you content? Do you think this is going to continue, like them being about that 600, 6, 650 win percentage? They they led the league last year in runs scored, you know, home runs, RBIs. You know, I mean, pretty much every offensive category. And right now, that I, I don't think they're really in the top ten of many. So yes, I expect them to climb into that. Continue with you know Tatis being healthy, Hosmer. Uh, you know, I hate to break your heart, but uh, you know, I expect their guys to you know continue to put up some offensive numbers and climb into the. Uh, the higher category and their pitching staff isn't going anywhere. So yes, I expect them to be there, you know, for the rest of the season. All right. So at at number three, you do have the San Diego, San Diego Padres. What about number two? So number two, we have the Chicago Cubs. I wanted to do it to Combs, but I just couldn't. Uh, <laughs> three straight versus the Padres. You know, five series in a row that they've won uh, after sweeping the Pirates in Pittsburgh and then taking two out of three from the Reds at home over the weekend. Uh, all but erasing their absolutely brutal first month of the season. Uh, yeah. Their starting pitching has improved a lot. The bullpens, you know, lights out. Uh, they, you know, successfully navigated through a lot of key injuries. Um, but you know, like Brandon says, this is a 500 team, and and they're getting a little bit higher above that 500. So I expect them to come down to earth, uh, especially after you know we have this show. Yeah. And, well, and they also have like their 10 day D- DL is littered. With starters mm-hmm. like just just like on like just uh, just like on, on there, so I would not be surprised at like at all if they start coming down to earth here. Give me a give me a a, a prediction for tomorrow night t- t- tomorrow night's game. The Cubs travel to San Francisco to take on the Giants. Who do you got winning that game? So I'll be there. So uh, I'll be I'll be live so that Brandon can watch his uh, his Cubs go down hard. I got it probably seven to, seven to one. Ooh, okay. Okay. I do the Cubs win that series, or do they uh, split? Or what, 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 what are you thinking? Bold is prediction. It, is it is it four or is it three? Uh, I believe it's a three game series. Let me pull it pull it up for you real quick here. Uh, da, 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 da. Scroll down. It is. It's actually a four game series. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get froggy and leap three to one. There you go. Uh, Giants. There you go. I like it. I like it. Way to not waffle around that a- way, that answer here. So recap here, you have the Astros at 10, Yankees at 9, Brewers at 8, Dodgers at 7, Red Sox at 6, Giants at number 5, White Sox at number 4. Number 3, you have the Padres. And number 2, you have the Cubs. And number 1, you have the Tampa Bay Rays. The Tampa uh, Bay with Rays. Two, with two more series wins over the Royals and the Phillies. Uh, mm-hmm. They're now 21-6 and six with a plus 72 run differential in the month of May. Uh, anyone who does not think that this is the best team in baseball right now is not paying attention, such as, you know, Brandon Combs. <laughs> uh, Austin Meadows is swinging a hot bat. You know, Mike Zanino has quietly hit 12 home runs. Uh, and the pieces have fallen into place on their pitching staff. That was a work in progress, um, you know, with a lot of newcomers this coming year. So, uh, you know, I, I think that my Red Sox are in trouble, and I think this Rays team might actually be distancing themselves in this AL East. And the uh, Rays started off pretty ice cold, if I'm not mistaken, just just as well. Like, we we were all kind of questioning, like, man, we all had them winning the AL East, and they're, uh, I, I, like, I, like, I believe they're, like, 1-9 and nine or something to, like, start yeah, the CACA season off, and right now they're sitting at 35-21. and 21. Yeah, I think they started off against Toronto, New York, and Red Sox, yeah. you know, for their three series. So, yeah, all three teams started pretty hot, so it was difficult for them. Yeah, so you, so you do have the Tampa Bay Rays at sitting at number one. So you told us earlier that that you had the Padres winning the World Series. Do you like? Are you still standing by that? Do you still have the Padres winning the World Absolutely. Series? Absolutely. Yes. Who, who who are they playing against? <coughs> like like. Oh, oh, oh. I'm starting to think it might be the Rays with how they're playing right yeah. now. Um, I, I think it's going to be a team out of the AL East. Uh, I really don't think my Red Sox have the pitching staff um, to help out that you know that offensive lineup. Um, the Yankees might get hot and, and might take it. Uh, I love the Blue Jays, but they, they've got a tough schedule. Um, you know, they were, they were looking pretty good, and then they ran into, you know, the Red Sox, the Yankees, the Rays, uh, similar to the Rays starting the season. So I think someone from the AL East, you know, has to go against those Padres. So you gave us your top 10. Are there any teams that are sitting at maybe 11 and like 12 that maybe they need one win w- here or there to maybe sneak into the top, 
top 10. I mean, there's a lot of teams that are, you know, of the last 10 games and, and such are, are six and four, five and five. So, yeah, I, I really had a tough time picking that, you know, that six through 10 that really could have kind of fluctuated between, you know, the, the 10 and 15 spots, really. Uh, so let me ask you this one last question.